everybody, Simon here, back on Simon's Tales number six. And we were approaching Christmas in the bar. Things were going well, and as I mentioned, there was a little trouble ahead. The uh, husband of Sue um, was drinking a lot in the bar, spending more time. And it didn't dawn on me at the time, because I was... Um, how old was I? <laughs> uh, 40, something like 42, 43. Um, Sue was probably about 55, maybe a bit older because Thai women look younger. And the, the hubby, probably 55, 60. But as someone pointed out, there could have been some sort of jealousy thing there because they seem to live sleep separately they had a child at college maybe he thought sue and me something was happening never was never did um but i didn't didn't really see all that having a bar it was all going well money was coming in we were creeping up to christmas and Things, girls, we were getting more stuff. More girls were joining because we were becoming more and more successful. The everything was running. The music system was running well. The DJ there, Friday, Saturday nights. The pool table was doing well. The rooms were doing amazing. Everything was just flowing along. I was getting into a bit of a routine with meet and greet customers. I was getting up in the morning, probably about eleven in the morning. I was starting work in the bar about five in the afternoon, so I had the afternoons free. So I started going out and exploring more of Patea and surrounding areas, um, finding myself having a bit of a drink in the afternoons at other bars, doing a bit of advertising for the bar, trying to get more customers. Um, didn't tend to spend any time with Frozen in the daytimes. She would sleep probably all day. So it was a, become a working relationship. Um, and we weren't able to both get out in the evening if I wanted to do pool contests and things. And, but I was forcing myself out. I was putting it down to going out, trying to get more customers. So I started going out some of the evenings uh, and back into the pool contests. I was practicing on our table I was doing okay and a few of the contests I'd get a bit of money second place I won a couple didn't get to the Sharkies one for quite a while um, I just seemed to clash with whatever was going on in the bar but I was maybe I was averaging 10,000 baht a month in in getting money from other contests which all helped because I was spending loads on I was eating I was eating well but I was mixing the variety of food I was eating Western food and Thai food and things um, but yeah, I did start to sort of tail off from getting involved with any girls and with Christmas approach I knew it was going to be a busy time, high season was just going to be crazy. I had a chat with Sue, I remember coming up to Christmas and saying look a lot of people are buying me drinks, customers, I want to kick back from the lady drinks, you know the same sort of thing and she agreed. So. At Christmas I mentioned I did get a bit of a rise but I also worked out that I was getting 20 baht. If people were buying me drinks, I was getting a kickback. And that added up to a couple of thousand baht a month as well. So I was creeping the money up, but I was still spending it on food and smoking and little bits and pieces. I don't know, it just seemed to go. So I was just, just surviving without dipping into savings. That dream of going to work in, in Asia and uh, now I, we, the bar had been what, four or five months and I was already getting disillusioned I must admit back that it was, that bar was hard work and it was quite sort of, it was still dark in there, you didn't see much daylight when, when you were in the bar, well it was night anyway but you didn't get outside in the fresh air a lot um, and Christmas was approaching, as I said Sue's hubby was starting to drink more and he started 
sitting in the bar a lot and she'd be watching me we didn't really get on we really didn't speak sue would be in and or if he was there she'd be up at her other business so it ended up with him being there i think quite more than sue in november and coming up december everything was great all the soapy girls had disappeared back off we'd got our own staff creeping through december Paul was doing okay, pool contests um, in the bar and the league and things. And it just it just carried on as normal. Nothing really major happened. Everything was running well. We didn't seem to have any problems with any police or anything. That was all taken care of with Sue and the hubby. Um, yeah, nothing. It just sort of plodded on. Come Christmas and we never had the big opening and sue said right at the beginning let's have a big party so we did i think it was christmas eve we had a balloon party and we put it up as a christmas party birthday party for the girls and that did okay we got a few extra customers on that occasion sue brought the soapy girls down brought so we had loads of girls and got loads more customers in so that did well New Year's Eve, straight through the Christmas period, New Year's Eve, we had a huge party. And that was even better. That pack, The place was packed. We had the girls from the Soapy, had our girls. Everyone was merry. It was a brilliant New Year's Eve party. And I think I ended up doing a bit of DJing as well. Really, really good night. Everything was flying. Brilliant. Then came the start, or the end, or <laughs> the downfall. It must have been two or three days after New Year. And it was late in the evening, it was probably two in the morning. Very quiet, the, the, the high season really drops off quick after New Year. And it really started affecting the money within a few days the money was dropped two in the morning and something happened the hubby very drunk um, I won't go into too much detail because but anyway it ended up that he was on the floor and the girls were dragging me out the bar um, and pushed me out the bar up the road and phone calls suddenly going everywhere frozen had already gone home um, I get a phone call I'm stood out in walking street from Sue evacuate the building uh, go and find somewhere to stay and I'll ring you tomorrow and I'll sort everything now there's reasons I can't say exactly what happened but none of it was my doing um, and alcohol played a part in it from somebody <laughs> I had to depart I had to leave the vicinity quick phone call to Frozen and told her what had happened my bike was still down at the bar I couldn't get to it my stuff was in my room, I couldn't get to it. Um, so, bike taxi, I went up to Frozen and stayed there the night. Next day, late morning, about 11 o'clock, phone call from Sue, um, telling me, hang tight for another 24 hours, um, and she'd be in touch the next day, so, he's trying to work out, you know, the bar, we weren't going to open that night and she said we, the bar's closed tonight it's completely closed told Frozen Frozen was ringing around the girls and uh, couldn't get a hold of all of them but the cashier was going to be there and telling everyone they got the night off bar closed you don't close your bar ever if you've got a bar in, uh, in Thailand you never close it because the customers will not like that it immediately sends the wrong signals and the routines get broken really bad for business bar was closed 
I didn't know what was going on. Um, I know what had happened the night before, and I was not in the wrong. I'd done nothing wrong. But I was a foreigner in Asia. Um, but I'm still on salary. Don't know what's going to happen. A conflict was happening between the bosses. Let's just leave it at that, I think. So, further, I just had a wander around that day, got food. Frozen said I could stay again the next night. I get a phone call that night from Sue. Everything's sorted, um, but we do have lots of problems. I need to meet you in the morning and her hubby at a five star resort up on the hill. Meet us at lunchtime, I'll buy you lunch. It's going to be a face to face meeting with three of us. <laughs> okay, right, interesting. Um, and we'll talk there. Are you okay? Um, you know, she rang the night, so are you okay tonight? Someone to stay? I said, yeah, yeah, no problem. She goes, okay, I'll sort it all tomorrow. So, where's this all going? Next morning, lunchtime, I head up to the place. Again, I haven't got my bike, but I head up, just song tells, and I can't remember. Anyway, I get up there, and I walk into this nice five-star place. Never been there before. Overlooking down, you can see the, the beach and the whole of Patea. Oh, it's beautiful, beautiful. I walk in, get met at the restaurant by uh, hostess. So I'm here for a meeting, and I could see Sue and her hubby right over her, next to the, the edge of the right. They just sat with a view basically out on the porch bit. Anyway, he gets across, and I walk slowly across. And I'm looking at uh, uh, Sue and her hubby, he's looking uh, very sheepish. And I get over. Um, Let's just, uh, the best way to say this is big apologies from him, big apologies from her. Um, three months salary put into my hand in cash from uh, him. And uh, I thought, oh yeah, this is the end of the job. But no. Big apologies everywhere. Okay, I said, fair enough. I'm the sort of person, if you have a problem, you know, you go outside, sort it out, and go back in and have a pint. So that's what sort of happened. Um, and uh, sat down, had a meal. Then came the bombshell. <laughs> the hub hubby wanted to take over the bar. Because it was doing so well, whether he liked being in the centre of town, whether he liked the fact he was making good money, I have no idea. But he wanted to take it over and uh, be the boss of the bar. Now, I wasn't um, interested in this. A lot of other things were said, and it came in about out in the air about a bit of jealousy and stuff, and I sorted all that out straight away. Um, but yeah, he wanted to run the bar, take it over. Now, the girls, Frozen, the staff, none of them were mad on this guy. Um, so, and I wasn't, and, and I said basically, I'm sorry, I don't, we don't get on, you know, and after everything that's happened, we just don't get on. I'm not really interested and further conversations and then he basically said well help me out find me get the girls back get it running find me another manager um, if we can't work it out uh, and maybe you and Sue can do another business and he sort of you know I'm okay and at that point you know I just been given a cash be quiet, thank you very much. There's a pat on the back, sorry for what's happened. Um, pay off. 
which was nice. Um, and Sue basically said, I fully understand what we'll do. We'll get another bar, Simon. We'll find another bar, build another bar, make another bar. I'll sort you out, everything, accommodation, everything. But can you help find another manager for this bar and just run it for the next few weeks until we get things going again? So, big change. <laughs> big upset. Uh, if any of you, when I move to Thailand, if any of you come over and meet, I'll, I'll tell you the full story, but it's it, it can't go on video. There's certain things that happen I just can't put on here. But it, the whole thing, overnight, suddenly, I lost the bar. Now, I said to Sue straight away, I don't want to live there. I'm, you know, I'm going to come out of there. Sue immediately offered other stuff. So we'll cover that on the next video. But it was all change. That bar was my bar one. And lots happened. <laughs> oh dear, over the coming weeks. We'll continue it on. <laughs> it's stuff that I haven't told you before, so we'll... We'll fill in those gaps. Thanks for watching. Not much aerobics tonight, today, this morning. <laughs> but there is in the future. I will see you soon. Bye for now.